At the end of adjunctions 2, I promised to prove that the two definitions we'd given of an adjunction were both the same. And then I manifestly chickened out of actually doing it uh, because I got cold feet and wasn't sure if I could spontaneously do it. So, I've now gone and, and warmed my feet up or something, and we're now going to prove that the definition we gave in adjunctions 1 does correspond to the definition we gave in adjunctions 2. So remember, in adjunctions 1, we said that an adjunction was given by a pair of functors going in opposite directions, a pair of natural transformations, uh, eta and epsilon satisfying some unit, uh, the triangle identities. And in adjunctions 2, we said that it was, an adjunction was, a uh, bijection between these HOM sets that was natural in both X and Y. So uh, this is F being left adjoint to G. Another way of remembering that is this F appears on the left in the HOM set and the G appears on the right on the HOM set. And the first part of this is, as I said, there's a bijection between these two things, which means that for every morphism from F of X to Y in D, there is a corresponding morphism from X to G of Y in C. And I like to write that as, the, call it this sort of transpose, and you can write that as uh, a bar. So given a morphism S over here, you would write S bar over there. We can't read that. S. I was trying to write it sort of secretly from S bar. It's a disaster. Okay. Uh, but also, there's a correspondence in this direction, which says that if you start with one over here, it corresponds to something over here, which you might write as T going to T bar. Um, and bar bar is the same as, as doing nothing whatsoever. And the point is, with natural isomorphisms, is it's not just the bijection between these two things, but the naturality tells us that it's some kind of sensible bijection, and it's really like it's an instance of the Yoneda lemma going on here. It's telling us that all you have to look at is where the identity goes, and that gives you everything else. So I said in adjunctions too that these are the two naturality conditions. There's naturality in X and natural naturality in Y. And the key thing to do here is to look at where the identity goes. So you can put y equals f of x here, put y equals f of x, and look at something, look at the identity on f of x. So where does it go over here? I'm writing this as transpose, and I'm writing this as transpose. And remember, we said that the, this is how we're going to try and define. If we start with the, this definition of junction, we're going to define a unit and co-unit, and this is how we're going to define the unit, because this is going to transpose to uh, eta of x. So when we come down here, what we're going to get is eta x composed with f. And that says that this is the same as coming down here. So we're starting with the identity here. We're composing it with the map f of f, and then we're transposing it. So that's the same as f of f bar. Um, the other thing we can do is we can put, oh, I've got enough space here. We can start here and go that way. Because this is an isomorphism, we can go this way around the square. So we can put uh, x equals g of y, and we can look at the identity on g of y. So we transpose it this way, and we get epsilon at y. So down here, we get epsilon of y composed of f of f is equal to, now we come down here, we just get uh, f transpose. So we can do the same over here. With this one as well, we can put uh, y equals f of x, and look at the identity here. Um, and this time what we're going to get, this is again transpose here, so we get eta at x composed with gg, eta x, and that's equal to g transpose. Alternatively, we can put, start over here and go this way around the square, and we can put x equals um, I didn't mean y equals f of x. Yeah, I did. And we can put x equals g of y and look at the identity on g of y. We transpose to get epsilon of y. And so here we have g composed of epsilon of y is equal to, coming down this way, uh, g of g composed of the identity. So that's g of g. And then we come over here and transpose. So those are the four important equations that we get out of these two naturality squares involving eta and epsilon. So what... Let's just recap. We're starting with this definition of a junction, and we want to make it into the other definition of junction. So far, I've defined the components of eta and epsilon. So it remains to show that they're natural and that they satisfy the uh, triangle identities. So first of all, what does naturality say? I'm only going to do half of these things. So let's check naturality of eta, which has a square looking like this. Uh, G f of x. Um, uh, so we're given a map f from x prime to x, just like here. 
and we'd have this naturality square like that. Here's eta at x prime, and here's eta at x. So look, this is an instance of one of these things. Let's call them um, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is an instance of what? What's an instance of? It's an instance of this, right? It's an instance of 3. So what we've got is, oh, it made a funny noise. It's all right. We've got g f x prime g f f, uh, eta x prime g f of f. And if we transpose this whole thing, right, this is, according to 3, it's equal to, so you remove the g and you transpose f of f bar. Oh, look, so if you transpose it, you get f of f. Now, coming down here, we've got f, and then we've got eta at x. Now, what's that an instance of? Oh, look, it's an instance of this. This is also equal to f of f bar. That was a bit easier than I was expecting it to be somehow. They're both equal to f of f bar. So both sides of this naturality square are equal. So what did we use? We used 1 and 3. So to get naturality of epsilon, we're going to use 2 and 4 in exactly the same way. I'll leave that to you. Now we can do the triangle identities. The first triangle identity has this in it. You've got to do um, g, f, g, f of x, which is f at eta of x, and then you remove the f, g by doing epsilon at f of x. And that's supposed to be the identity. Well, let's have a look at this. Let's write it out in a straight line so that we don't confuse ourselves. That's f, eta of x, eta at f of x. I mean, maybe you weren't about to get, get confused, but I was. Uh, so let's now see what this is an instance of. Well, it's an instance of this. Look, where eta of x is f. So what this is telling us is that that is equal to eta of x transpose. But what's eta of x transpose? It's the identity, because that's how we got eta in the first place. And that's exactly what we want. So that came from 2. And I do believe that the other triangle identity is going to come from 4. So I'll leave that one to you. So what have we done? We've constructed natural transformations, eta and epsilon, and showed that they satisfy the triangle identities using these naturality squares. So to do it the other way around, we'd have to start with, what would we have to do? We'd have to start with eta and epsilon satisfying the triangle identities and construct a natural isomorphism like this. Now, I'm hoping that you can see how to do it because I don't think I can do it in the remaining time. You construct this natural isomorphism by doing this entire process backwards and prove that these two things are natural using all these things backwards. Um, and I do believe, is there anything else I should say at this point? I think that's all I was going to say today. Uh, so there it is.